So I don't know if you know this, but beavers fart. But unlike humans, beavers fart to communicate. Though I guess a room clearing fart does send a particular message. Hi, I'm Dylan and this is not exactly normal. For the past few years, I've been leaving wildlife cameras up in some beaver hotspots that I found up north, which is how I learned that beavers fart wet, wet farts. And now you have to know too. So I didn't know this at the time, but beavers are socially monogamous. Unlike sexual monogamy, where a pair of animals will only mate with each other, which is super rare outside of humans and only seen in a few different species, social monogamy describes animals that live exclusively together, but will mate with other partners. So beavers are swingers, which I got to witness firsthand. Dylan! I wasn't there. I spent the last two summers following beavers around in a kayak with a camera, and one day, I noticed that the beaver I was following was diverting from its usual sunset route and making a beeline for another brown patch in the water. Which turned out to be another beaver. The swinging had begun. They dropped their keys in the bowl and did whatever swingers do in maybe the 70s. Is this still a thing? The two of them met up on a rocky shoreline and started to get it on. So I'm scrambling to get the camera going while also frantically trying to slow the kayak down as to not spook them. You have to be paddling pretty fast to keep up with the beavers. Unfortunately, both camera operating and paddling require your arms, so I decided I'd rather get the shot for a little bit than slow down and miss the party. Not a good call! So I came in hot and scared off the almost boning beavers. A very sad day indeed. But the male got his revenge, slapping his tail at me angrily for cockblacking him before dipping back underwater. Anyways, beavers are socially monogamous and they have a pretty novel and pungent way of communicating with their partners. In addition to following the beavers, I also set up trap cams in order to catch them when I wasn't around. I didn't really know where to put the trap cams, but I saw these slick little mud runways leaning out of the lake in a few different places, and I thought that those might be a good spot for a beaver to get in and out of the water. So I set up my camera, came back a few days later, and lo and behold, a beaver. And a lot of other wildlife. It turns out that these are beaver scent mounds, or caster mounds, and while the slick mud does seem to help them slide gracefully-ish back into the water, their primary function is to communicate with other beavers. Beavers are usually active after dark. The one I was hanging out with would generally go out around four or five, and I'd follow him for a bit until it was almost dark. Something he soon came to hate me for, and at the worst point in our relationship, he spent about an hour slapping the water in the bay we were in, telling me just how he felt. I quickly got the message and went home. At night, my trap cams would pick him up, and while I was expecting to see him doing a lot of architecture, like eating trees and cutting down trees and doing things to trees that have all my neighbors putting up chicken wire, what I got was not that. Every night, he would emerge from the water onto his little mound, walking on his hind legs and carrying mud and sticks with his two front legs. Beavers walking on their hind legs and carrying sticks are adorable, by the way. He would then drop the fresh mud and sticks on the top of the mound, slap it down with his tail, and continue on his way. So this became my new obsession. Get as much possible footage of beavers walking on their hind legs while carrying mud. Because that's simply the cutest thing. Other than bears walking on their hind legs to blend in with humans, which science can't explain, probably. If you haven't used a wildlife trap camera before, they're usually these little self-contained cameras that you can strap to things. They can shoot infrared or have a flash and have a built-in IR motion detector. So when anything moves in front of it, you get a photo and or a video. 
Though sometimes they're nicer. I was watching the behind the scenes on Netflix's Our Planet, and I saw that for their trap cams, they were using the camera that I use as my primary. Womp womp. Actually, they were using a GH4 and I used a GH5, but I didn't realize that until after I wrote the joke. Didn't see the pop-up flash, so keeping it in. But the annoying thing is that if your motion detection settings are too aggressive, or if your location has a lot of moving things in it, like branches blowing in the wind, you end up getting a lot of clips of nothing. I like seeing this plant move as much as the next person, but maybe we could get something else? No? How about snow covering the lens? That's fun. Or the sun triggering the motion detector somehow. Or what if the camera just fell over? That'd be great. Anyways, all of this is to say that after leaving a camera out for eight months, there's a lot of clips to go through. So imagine my surprise when I'm flipping through hundreds of shots of plants blowing in the wind when I hear, yeah, it's a beaver farting. Which I thought was a one-off thing until I got my cameras back last year and I had dozens of beaver farts, all on camera. Imagine how much they're farting in the places my cameras aren't. Actually, maybe don't imagine that. These farts are used to release castorium, or beaver butt goo, a strong and sweet smelling yellowish substance that you can actually see coming out of the beaver here. Isn't nature fun? Oh, I also forgot to mention that it smells like vanilla. So yeah, if you wear Antius by Chanel or many other wood scented perfumes, you might want to know that they're made with castorium, which comes from a beaver's cloaca. You might not want to spray it too close to your face. The castorium is used to scent mark these mud bounds in order to let other beavers know what's up. It's also used to flavor cigarettes, whiskey, Swedish schnapps, and is a food additive to make things taste like vanilla. But beavers don't know this, but they do know whose yellowish castorium they're smelling. Each beaver produces a specific smell that is unique to them and lets other beavers know that this is their territory. The more beavers in a given area, the more scent mound borders there will be. Sometimes they will even build scent fences, which are mounds of their scent built closely together to deter other beavers from entering a specific part of their territory. Eventually the castorium is weathered away and they have to go back to their mound to re-up their scent. These disappearing butt messages are like Snapchat for beavers. Castorium is not produced by the beaver's anal glands, but when they scent mark, they often add in a touch of anal gland secretion to the mix, so their mounds sadly don't smell like delicious vanilla. The smell is more like someone defecated on some vanilla ice cream. Other than territory marking, science isn't 100% sure what function these scent mounts serve, but it's thought that they are used to help family members navigate at night and let current and prospective mates know that it's business time. It's business. These mounds not only attract other hot single beavers in the area, but they also attract a whole host of other species. I've seen great blue herons fishing, otters sliding into the water on their bellies, a black bear taking a selfie, entire families of raccoons hanging out, a deer covered with more mosquitoes than I want to think about, muskrats feeding, fishers running around, canoers, glad they didn't take the camera, and of course, wildlife photographers. Oh, and my dog. These mounds are popular with other species for a few reasons. Some of them use them the same way beavers do and mark their territory, but many seem to be attracted by all the little bits and bugs and smells that are in the mud that the beavers bring up from the bottom of the lake. I mean, who wouldn't want to hang out on this thing? It's a good time. Thankfully, castorium is not nearly as popular with humans as it used to be. Castorium has been widely used throughout much of recorded history. Its use dates back as far as ancient Greece and likely even further. In one of Aesop's fables, a hunted beaver bites off and hurls his own testicles at his hunter as he knows that's what the hunter is after. They thought the caster sack was their testicles, a thinking that lasted quite a while. The Romans also used castorium to induce abortions, unsuccessfully. In the 12th century, they thought that it could cure paralyzed limbs and it was used to treat, quote, the brain by Francis Bacon in the 16th century. This demand contributed to the Eurasian beavers being hunted to near extinction. The same thing happened when the Europeans arrived in North America, but this time they made some hats too. While the demand for beaver pelts fell towards the end of the 19th century, the demand for castorium continued, and it soon became a popular ingredient in perfume. Judy has brought with her a bottle of perfume. It was her first real perfume, and she was eager to show it to her friends, and the girls were impressed and as a flavor additive in cooking. It could be found in ice cream, candy, gum, drinks, and baked goods. Uh-oh. Too bad.
that, Betty. I guess back in the day, people really loved beaver butts. The more you know. Fortunately, castorium use has declined a lot, likely due to how expensive it is. You have to milk the beavers in order to get it, by the way. Literally, you have to sedate and milk the beavers in order to get their butt goo. That, or you have to kill them and cut them open, which was, and sadly still is, how many people get their castorium fix. Beavers are amazing animals. And I knew that they built entire ecosystems with their dam building, and without them, those ecosystems disappear, which is pretty badass. But what I didn't know is that by making and farting on these little mud mounds, they create mini ecosystems that benefit countless other species. Thank you, beavers, and your wet, wet farts for making my backyard a better and more aromatic place. While I was lucky enough to capture some footage that I really liked on these shoots, what I was really trying to get was this shot, a beaver swimming underwater. After months of trying all sorts of ways, I never did get the shot, but I did get to film something even cooler that I was absolutely not expecting. Oh my God, what is that? But that'll have to wait for another day. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes as often as I can make them. I told you it'd be more than once a year, hopefully. Hey Poochie Poochies, Mr. Poochie Boy.